Welcome back to uh, New York. Uh, so glad you're with us. AFA Today on AFR Talk. Kevin McCullough is my name, and my phone number is always open to you, 888-340-3373. 888-340-3373. Uh, Ted Cruz on Megyn Kelly last night. This amendment is about power, and it is about politicians silencing the citizens. Mr. Chairman, when did elected Democrats abandon the Bill of Rights? Mr. Chairman, where did the liberals go? That was uh, Ted Cruz with Megyn Kelly. The phone number, 888-589-8840. Apologies for giving you the wrong one. Again, too many numbers swimming around in my head these days. 888-589-8840. Kevin McCullough is my name. Uh, And uh, it's good questions posed by Senator Cruz uh, to his uh, fellow senators last night. Here's how the Powerline blog has broken this down. John Hinderaker, uh, one of the uh, senior writers there, uh, this is some of the proposed language, and I, I, I don't want it to be too um, eggheady, so I don't want it to. I don't want to lose your uh, uh, attention on it, but I do think that what they they've written here is important. So this is from the proposal to gut the First Amendment. Congress shall have power to regulate and raise. Uh, to regulate the raising and spending of money and in-kind equivalents with respect to federal elections, including through setting limits on, one, the amount of contributions to candidates for nomination for election two or for election two federal office, and two, the amount of funds that may be spent in support of or in opposition to such candidates. Now, you may remember a little, um, a little court case that went all the way to the Supreme Court, Citizens United, Uh, and uh, the McCutcheon cases. And these cases basically argued successfully all the way to the Supreme Court, and the the Supreme Court agreed that they argued successfully that the spending of money is equivalent to speech. That if I desire to fund speech, I have the right to do that because I have the right to express myself. And the the expression of oneself can be defined by any number of things. You can write, you can speak, you can uh, financially support causes, but it is actually the ability, the free market ability, to advance your message that should not be limited. Um, This particular proposal that 42 Democrats have signed off on would basically say, no, Congress will have the power to regulate the raising and the spending of money for elections. Now, Hinderocker writes at Powerline, observers have noted that if the Udall Amendment became law, Congress would set ridiculously low contribution and spending levels so as to virtually guarantee the re-election of incumbents. And that's true. And it doesn't matter which party you're in. Uh, if, if Congress is in charge of it, they're going to limit the, what you're allowed to do because it empowers them. The more power they have and the less power that we have, uh, the longer they protect their interest. The only equalizer to elected government in our society is financial interest outside of government. Let me say that again. The only equalizer to government in our society is financial interest that is outside of the government. So, for instance, if we don't like the way they're going, someone can fund a campaign and run for office and win votes And many times you have to have money to be able to do that. You have to be able to travel, to talk to people, to buy airtime, to do all the rest of it. Um, Even the ACLU has put forward um, a statement opposing the amendment. But some of the hypotheticals that they've come up with are, are the following. Congress would be allowed to restrict the publication of candidates' memoirs, like Hillary Clinton's forthcoming uh, Hard Choices book. They would uh, criminalize uh, a blog on the Huffington Post uh, that went after certain people within so many days of the election. They could regulate uh, a website uh, by the reform group Public Citizen, which urges voters to contact their members of Congress to support a constitutional amendment addressing Citizens United and, and the McCutcheon cases. In other words, Congress could basically have a blank check to decide which speech they would allow and which speech they wouldn't. And I'm sorry to say this, but is is there no one besides Senator Cruz in the United States Senate that 
has the guts to expose what this is and to, and to talk about it? Um, again, I, I woke up this morning. What happened to our country? What happened to our country? We're, we're calling traitors people that served with honor and distinction. That's what the uh, National Security Advisor to the President is doing. The Secretary of Defense is patently saying no one died looking for the what he calls the POW. I call him a defector and a traitor. And on top of that, we have an elected body that is accountable to us in, in, in broad daylight, right in front of our face, attempting to take away probably the most cherished First Amendment right, constitutional right, divine right that we have in America, and that is to have freedom of speech. Does anybody think that if they curb speech in those areas that they're not going to come after it in, oh, I don't know, the religious space or, I don't know, the cultural debate space? Uh, who's to say that if you give Congress suddenly the right to start picking and choosing which speech is allowed, that they're not going to come to people that they happen to ideologically disagree with and say, hey, all of you Christians that say that uh, someone having sex with someone of their same sex is immoral, if you do that again, we're going to send you to prison. 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. What happened to our country last night when we were all asleep? Or have we been asleep for way too long? Let's talk to George in Missouri. Hi, George. You're first with Kevin McCullough. Glad you're here. How are you doing, Kevin? Uh, I just wanted to thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Ted Cruz, for what what you said. And the people of America hired a black president. They, they Everybody, you know, great. But they didn't realize we were hiring a black Muslim sympathizer that was going to let go of all these people. He, we actually hired a traitor, a d- dictator. You know, so, I mean, now we need to do something about it. Well, and you know what? That, that officially began yesterday in some of the uh, primaries that have been being held, and it's really going to kick in in November because if we don't get to the polls and vote, and we don't, we don't finally decide, look, um, you can say whatever you want about economic theory and you can do all this other stuff. You start saying you're going to take away the First Amendment, uh, the, the ability for me to express myself. Uh, you're going to come in and sheriff the, uh, uh, the words that people say that they write in their editorials to their, to their uh, local uh, op-ed newspaper uh, page. You're going to come in and, and talk to activist groups that may or may not be aligned with what you believe, and you're going to, you're going to curb what they're allowed to say based on uh, a random amount of authority that Congress uh, gives themselves for no good reason. Friends, this is, this is beyond, this is, this is, this is utterly contemptible. And, and I don't, I don't, I have, I have bent over backwards for six years to not label the president um, a Muslim sympathizer. He calls himself a Christian, not any form of Christianity that I recognize, but he identifies himself with a church, quote-unquote, in Chicago, I have respectfully allowed him to say that and allowed him to do uh, what he has said and done in his public appearances. But friends, I'm just saying, if the apple tree is growing pears, it ain't an apple tree. And what you have here is someone that, as we have looked deeper and deeper and deeper at it in just the last four days, just the last four days, in just the last four days, the uh, blogosphere, the Internet, uh, the news agencies, left and right, the front pages of the newspapers, talk radio, cable news, television, all channels. We have discovered more about the case of Bo Bergdahl than I ever wanted to know, but we've discovered more about him, I guess, than what the president's own intelligence coming to him informed him of. And is anybody else, along with me, kind of tired of that game? 
The president has the most sophisticated intelligence networks at his disposal. And I'm tired of hearing, well, I saw about it on the evening news. Oh, well, we didn't really know that. Oh, well, I was ill-briefed. Well, this is incompetency. This is the kind of thing that, yes, I've not said this before, but I believe that releasing five known and wanted terrorists who have pledged their life to destroying America again with no accountability and trading them for a defector who wanted to be on their side is high treason. And he deserves to be impeached. I've not used the I word. I have been very restrained. I have been I have tried to give the benefit of the doubt. Some of you have hated me for that. But I've always wanted to be guided by wisdom. But when you turn five of our enemies loose, five of, of basically carbon copies of Osama bin Laden's back out there to do what they did before. Where was the concern for the American people? And your number one duty as the commander in chief is not to come in and decide who can have sex with who in the military now. Though that seemed to be the only thing, Mr. President, you could find to obsess yourself with with our military was the sex lives of the maybe 0.5% of the people that serve. They were somehow being mistreated, so you had to right the scale of justice. But you turned five terrorists loose, who are perhaps the five most dangerous men to our nation's future in the world. And you spent months and months and months and months and months negotiating the release of someone who hates us. And in the meantime... You won't make a three-minute phone call to, the, to your buddy, the president of Mexico, and ask for our Marine to be sent home. You have committed treason, Mr. President. You are working actively in our presence against us. And I don't understand... what the options that are left are, except to impeach him. I've not used the I word, but it's time. 202-224-3121, if you want to let your congressional members know your thoughts on it. 202-224-3121. This is a dereliction of duty. To release these dangerous elements back into the wild. To kill, maim, murder, and rape again. And they will. Even the president said they probably will. When asked when he was up against a wall yesterday. Yes, they, they, they probably will return to fight again. So it's either... We have the most incompetent people that have ever done anything in office. Or we have people that are just dead set against the welfare of the American people. And in either capacity, I don't think you can have a safe nation. I don't think you, have, I, I don't think you can argue that the nation's being carefully watched over from a security standpoint otherwise. Why else would we tell our Border Patrol agents uh, to seek cover and hide when the bad guys come rumbling over the, uh, over the border? Don't shoot at them. Don't shoot at them. R seek cover and hide. Go, go run. Run to a cave. R run behind a big rock. You know who always dies in the movies, by the way? The nameless henchmen that hide behind the big rock when the bad guys come down the road. They're always the ones that end up dead. That's the American people. I didn't even mention this when we were talking about the border issue yesterday, but did you know that we've had more than 3,000 since 9-11, 2001? We've had more than 3 
8,000 Middle Eastern people, people of Middle Eastern origin, caught by Border Patrol at our southern borders. And on a fair estimate, on a fair estimate, according to Border Patrol, they don't stop more than 10% of those that get across. Eight 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 five eight nine eight eight four zero. Your thoughts? Kevin used the I word. Uh oh. Michelle in Texas, you're next. Hi. Hi, Kevin. Congratulations, you finally said the I word. <laughs> God bless you. I have a few things. Um, I I had seizures the other day, so I'm talk best I can. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead. Well, I live here at Pahood, and on our news, they say that the trader is going to be coming here to Pahood by the end of the week. Why? I don't know. He shouldn't be coming here. We don't need no more of that. And I think our president has an agenda. We're going to find out pretty soon, and it's going to be scary. And, and, and I wanted to let you know... Also, that um, I'm not sure of the acronym, like I told you, producer. Michelle, I, I appreciate your call, and I'm sorry, but I do have to let you go. We're up against the break. Please call back sometime. Uh, Kevin McCullough, glad to be with you. This is AFA Today on AFR Talk.